Good morning gamers and welcome to my beginner monk guide for Dawn Trail. My name is Arcee and I've been raiding on monk since patch 5.2 in Shadowbringers. I have a lot of experience with coaching and teaching from back in my competitive FGC days. I'd like to start the video by explaining who my target audience for this guide is. This guide is for monk players who are looking to get into the endgame content for Dawn Trail, anyone who has a basic understanding of monk as it stands at level 100, and anyone looking to understand the changes done to monk from Endwalker to Dawn Trail. This video will cover the core concepts of monk and explain how the job works now. Monk's fundamentals didn't change too much between expansions. Lots of the concepts that we used back in Endwalker such as Late Weaving Riddle of Fire and the 11 GCD Burst Window still exist in Dawn Trail Monk. The overall rotation still has the same flow to it where you alternate the GCDs as needed. But now, with the Beast Gauge, you simply follow the glowy buttons on your hotbar. We got a handful of upgrades to our main weapon skills, but they function exactly the same as before. Bootshine gets upgraded to Leaping Oppo, True Strike changes to Rising Raptor, and Snap Punch gets changed to Pouncing Coral. Our Blitzes were also kept the same, where 3 GCDs of the same stance after activating Perfect Balance grants a Lunar Naughty, 3 GCDs of different stances grant a Solar Naughty, and when you have both Naughties, you can execute Phantom Rush. For an Elixir Burst and Phantom Rush sequence, you want to use 3 Oppo Oppo GCDs since they give you the most amount of damage overall. For a Rising Phoenix sequence, you just have to use one of the GCDs from each stance. It doesn't matter which of the GCDs you use, although it's good practice to use them from weakest to strongest. It'll be more explained in the burst section of this video. Our AoE changed very slightly with Dawn Trail. Shadow of the Destroyer is a gain on 3 or more targets, 4 Point Fury is a gain on 4 or more targets, and so is Rockbreaker. We also no longer have the bleed from Demolish, so there's no more multi-dotting anymore. Just follow these rules if there's 3 targets, and use AoE without any thoughts in your brain whatsoever if there's 4 or more. Our elemental replies are a gain on 1 or more targets, so you should always try to hit multiple targets if you can, but don't worry about it too much if you can't. Wind's reply is a line in front of you, and Fire's reply hits your target and all enemies surrounding that primary target. From Endwalker to Dawn Trail, the demolished and disciplined fist timers were completely removed, and they were replaced with the expanded Beast Chakra Gauge. Monk's general flow follows the same sequence as before, where we want to go through each stance alternating the GCDs as necessary, starting from Oppo stance, then Raptor, and then finally Coral. We still have some of the rules from back in Endwalker to apply to our current rotation. We still want to use Perfect Balance after any Oppo GCD, and we want to use Oppo GCDs when we have a Formless Fist buff. Our GCDs can now be divided into two main types, Fury Stack Generators and Fury Stack Spenders. The Generators will fill out all the little balls in your gauge, and the Spenders only use up one of the balls when executed. If you played Endwalker Monk, you might remember how we wanted to get the Leaden's Fist buff to empower our Bootshine. With the new Furies gauge, you can treat every single Ball Drainer like it has a Leaden Fist buff on it where it gets empowered when executed and the Fury stack is consumed. Whenever you don't have stacks of Fury, your Ball Generators will be highlighted, and when you do have stacks, the Spenders will be highlighted. What this means is that you can just follow the Oppo Oppo Raptor Coral sequence by just pushing the glowy buttons as they come up. There's a handful of more changes to Monk in Dawn Trail that we can consider more quality of life rather than a proper change. Brotherhood now allows the storage of up to 10 chakra while it's active. This was done to counter the chakra overcap issue, 
we had to deal with back in Endwalker. This only applies for the duration of the Brotherhood buff, meaning that you still want to spam the Forbidden Chakra or Enlightenment as much as you can. Six-Sided Star also got changed, but it essentially works exactly the same as before. Upon execution, all the chakra you have stored up on your gauge will be consumed and added to the potency of the Six-Sided Star hit. The numbers can get funky pre-level 100, but at max level we can just worry about using this when you have to disconnect from the boss for longer than two GCDs or your limit breaking. Dontrail introduced a few changes to many jobs regarding actions that change into other actions. For Monk, this mostly applies to Meditate. Scrolling through your job actions, you will notice that we have a bunch of different actions for Meditate. These all serve the same purpose of charging up your chakra gauge by one. The main difference is that some of these convert into your AoE chakra spender or your single target spender. Additionally, you can choose to split these buttons up in the action change settings. Both methods are essentially the same and serve the same purpose. Just play with the settings and stick to what is most comfortable for you. I've covered the changes done to the old buttons, let's go over the new shiny buttons we got. We got an extension to our riddle actions. We got Earth's Reply, Wind's Reply, and Fire's Reply. Riddle of Earth now unlocks Earth's Reply. It works similarly to how it does in PvP. Essentially, you activate Riddle of Earth for 20% mitigation, and if you take damage while it's active, you get a buff that increases the potencies of the on-demand healing from Earth's Reply. The heal from this can be used to help your healers top up the party or during long instances of high damage. Riddle of Wind unlocks Wind's Reply, which is a singular use range attack in a line in front of you for the duration of Riddle of Wind. There's not much else to say about this action, you should always use it and never let it go to waste, especially during buffs. You can use the range property of this action if there is a 1 GCD disconnect from the boss, so you can keep your GCD rolling. Just keep in mind that the range is somewhat limited and you only get one use of it. Riddle of Fire now unlocks Fire's Reply, a single use range attack that hits all enemies around your primary target. Fire's Reply is a huge part of your overall damage, so we want to be using this under buffs no matter what. If you don't use Fire's Reply before it expires, you lose it. Upon activation, you are granted a Formless Fist buff, meaning that you can press any GCD afterwards, regardless of what stance you were before pressing Fire's Reply. This imposes a small restriction as to when we should be using Fire's Reply, since we want to make the most out of the Formless Fist buff. The specific placements of Fire's Reply will be explained a little more in the Openers and Burst Window section of this video. If you want a more detailed explanation, please refer to the full Monk Guide in the Balance Discord. With Dontrail Monk, our Burst Windows are pretty similar to what they were before. Since we no longer have any timers that we must keep up, we can focus our efforts towards using the stronger GCDs available within buffs and keeping weaker GCDs outside of buffs. Within 20 seconds, we can fit 11 GCDs in the Riddle of Fire window at our faster recast speed. With this in mind, we can determine what exactly will be used during our burst window. Our even minute burst should include at least two blitzes, one's fire's reply, a wind's reply if available, and as many OPPO GCDs as possible. This is a lot of buttons, 8 or 9 to be exact. This means that we must use perfect balance before Riddle of Fire comes up. Thankfully, we don't have to worry about what specific buttons to press, but instead, we look at what stances we need for the necessary blitz. As long as the first blitz we use is within buffs, we can press perfect balance any time before that. This will generally be after an OPPO GCD that is within 2-7 seconds left on Riddle of Fire's cooldown. Our odd minute burst should include one blitz, one fire's reply, and a wind's reply if available. As for the rest of the GCDs, we want as many of these 
to be alternating between Leaping Oppo and Dragon Kick, since that is our strongest GCD pair. For a more detailed explanation, please look at the full guide, but on average it has been calculated that it is a bigger gain to alternate Leaping Oppo and Dragon Kick. We have different openers depending on the varying scenarios we might be dealing with. If you played Monk and Endwalker, you might remember how kill time is our main determining factor for what rotation we should use. The openers and rotations we have available are all equally as viable. Some just excel in more common scenarios and others require many specific prerequisites. All of the advanced openers are explained in the full guide and will be covered in more detail in the advanced guide. The default opener you should use is the double lunar opener. This opener is ideal for 99% of cases and has a slightly higher output compared to the other alternatives since it scales so hard with raid buffs. This opener intentionally overcaps on a lunar naughty to push Phantom Rush from the 1 minute buffs into the 2 minute buffs. Since Dawn Trail changed all raid buffs to last 20 seconds, Monk can pump into raid buffs way harder than before. Additionally, you're using more Oppo GZDs and buffs, which ends up doing more damage in the long run. Getting more uses of Leaping Oppo in buffs and the highly potent Phantom Rush into buffs makes up for the overcap of the Lunar Naughty. Just keep in mind that if you lose out on a use of a Blitz or a Phantom Rush, this opener is not recommended. With this opener, you enter the 1 minute burst with 1 Lunar Naughty. This means that our Blitz must be a Rising Phoenix. We still want to follow the same logic as usual of pushing perfect balance after an Oppo GCD. For the solar odd windows, there is some optimization that can happen around using perfect balance before or after Riddle of Fire. These various alternatives are all explained in the full guide. Essentially, you can optimize pushing some weaker GCDs outside of Riddle of Fire to push stronger GCDs in the buff. This is all explained in detail in the full guide and falls outside of the scope of this beginner guide. If we know we have an odd minute kill time, we should opt to use the Solar Lunar Opener. This opener generates the most amount of Phantom Rushes as long as you kill after an odd minute. When using the Solar Lunar Opener, this means that our odd minute burst is going to be a Phantom Rush Blitz. In this case, we generally want to wait until after activating Riddle of Fire and an Oppo GCD to press perfect balance. The reason is because compared to the even minute burst, we have more room for all of the perfect balance GCDs. We use three Oppo GCDs to build up the Phantom Rush Blitz, and then after using the Blitz, we use another Oppo GCD from the Formless Fist buff. This maximizes the amount of Oppo GCDs we have, for the most amount of damage. Our burst also includes the elemental replies. Both fire's reply and wind's reply have different rules. We have full flexibility around wind's reply. You just push it whenever you'd like. It is best to use it whenever you do have to disengage from the boss to keep up time, but you only have a 15 second window to use it. Fire's Reply is a bit more complicated since it grants a Formless Fist buff. We ideally want to use Fire's Reply after a Form Bonus Oppo Oppo GCD or whenever you don't have a form. Masterful Blitz and Fire's Reply are essentially interchangeable and swapping them around makes no difference to your damage. At the end of the day, they both serve the same purpose of existing outside of form restrictions and both granting the formless fist buff. Sometimes you want to delay using fire's reply because you can hold it to a moment where you have to disconnect from the boss to keep uptime. Just make sure you're following the rules mentioned before. To bring everything full circle, this video covered a lot of topics around the basics of Monk, the beginner openers, some fundamental concepts you must know, and generally, I believe it's more important to learn how a job works versus just learning a fixed rotation, because when you do this, 
you're able to adapt to any situation that any encounter might throw at you. Additionally, this is one of Monk's primary strengths. The fact that it's so flexible means that it's super valuable to bring in a blind environment. When you're progging a new fight or anything that's completely new or unseen, this is where Monk thrives. I do want to say special thanks to all of the monks uh, from the Balance Discord, Perfect Balance, Ayaliz, Mantrabot, Leah, all the other goats, Neon Please, the f the goat of monks. <laughs> and um, just say thanks for all the feedback, all the help with this guide, and just generally any everyone who has supported me through this. If this guide helped you or a friend of yours, please give it a like. Uh, all the support means a lot to me. If you have any feedback or suggestions for any future guides, please do let me know in the comments. Uh, I'm always open to feedback. And uh, if you want to see more of my content, you can either subscribe or follow me on Twitch. Uh, I do stream on Twitch every, every week, three times a week. And I play a lot of Final Fantasy. I'm always happy to answer questions or clarify things, help people out. You know, that's kind of why I'm doing this. I do this to help others and... Sh just share knowledge so that everyone can learn and improve. That's the end goal, right? I'm trying to reach a thousand followers before the end of the year, and I'm also going to be streaming my fruit prog, so if you guys are interested in that, uh, feel free to stop by and give me a follow. So, uh, thank you for watching, and I do hope that this guide was very helpful to you, and uh, I'll see you next time. The, monk the advanced guide is going to be starting to be worked on, so look forward to that.